Namaste everyone. Welcome back to IHA lecture series. So today I'm going to uh, start with the very same poem that I had already done. Uh, but uh, it was done partially. I had started it from the seventh stanza and I have been receiving many requests and the mails from uh, students outside Kerala too. Uh, they they have been asking me to do the first few stanzas all together. So in this session, I am attempting that. We are going to discuss about a poem written by Walt Whitman, Passage to India in the session. And I would like to give you an overview of this particular poem. Together with a um, line by line explanation of the first stanza. Um, so, uh, I actually had done uh, 7 to 9 stanzas earlier in my uh, channel. You might have gone through that. See, before we jump on to the discussion of the poem, uh, I just want you to uh, know two points. Okay? The first idea is that of the title. Passage to India. What does that mean? Passage to India. Uh, so we can actually wonder if at all it's a journey to India. Why should we go to India? <laughs> That's a question. But over here, passage to India, in that title, India is actually used as a metaphor. And okay, in this poem, throughout, India is a spiritual kingdom. Are you getting it? And India is actually given as the reason's early paradise. So that's the importance of passage to India. Uh, the title passage to India just do not mean you have to travel to India. But uh, it is actually an attempt to explore the very spiritual kingdom that man had once lost. He is actually getting into the Miltonic vision. Okay. Well, the uh, second point that... Uh, I would like to stress this, of course. Uh, throughout the poem, there is a reason why he has started writing this particular poem. Um, he starts the lines of the poem like this. Singing my days. Singing the achievements of the present. Singing over here means celebrating my days. So, there should be something special over here that he feels like this is a time that we should celebrate. Okay. Um, so, he is actually talking about three scientific achievements that was there during his time. Okay. And uh, the three scientific achievements are opening of Suez Canal. And I hope you know uh, what is Suez Canal. Uh, it is a waterway. Okay. It's an artificial uh, sea level waterway uh, which, uh, which is in Egypt. It connects Mediterranean Sea and Red Sea and uh, it actually um, helps the travelers to travel from Europe to South Asia reducing a distance of 7000 kilometers. So that is the uh, one case, one achievement that he is talking about opening of Suez Canal and this is why it is so special. It can reduce the traveling time. Okay, you need to travel 7000 kilometers and it was an artificial sea level. We had done it. We had constructed it. Okay, well, and the second case is that of uh, uh, transatlantic cable. Okay, transatlantic cable. Uh, as the name suggests, transatlantic cable, uh, it's actually uh, a cable which is used for a sea level cable, of course, I would say under sea level as the uh, title suggests. Uh, this cable actually goes under Atlantic Sea, okay, and this is used for telegraph communication during that time. And um, um, you know what, uh, before uh, the construction of uh, this particular cable, if you want to send a message from North America to Europe, you have to do it by a ship so in reality this i'm not at all exaggerating things okay but factually it was said like um, you know you used to take if at all you were a person who lived in that particular period 1860s and all um, you 
will receive the same message after 10 days. Can you imagine that? We only take a second, a fraction of a second to WhatsApp or mail or message right now. But it was a time like that. So that too had uh, reduced the distance between human beings. Are you getting it? Uh, of course, it joined geographical um, areas too. Then uh, the third case is that of uh, American Railroad. Okay. And uh, this American Railroad, sorry, this American Railroad had actually uh, joined Central Pacific and Union Pacific Railroad uh, in Utah. Okay. Uh, so, American Railroad. So these are the three achievements that he is actually talking about in this particular poem. Opening of Suez Canal, American Railroad, okay, Transcontinental Railroad and Transatlantic Cable which was used for telegraph communication. Okay, I think that's clear. And when, uh, uh, you know, talking about uh, the whole poem as it is, uh, the complete poem is actually divided into uh, nine stanzas and uh, all together it has uh, 277, 277 lines uh, to total it out. I uh, know that uh, Walt Whitman is actually, he is regarded as the father of free verse and uh, that literally reflects in this particular poem. Okay, um, you do not have any rhyme scheme in this particular poem. Uh, if you just observe, it is full of imagery. Okay, it's picturesque when you travel uh, from one line after the other, when you travel from one stanza to the other, you actually get back to the past ones, then you come to the present, you marvel at the history of the past. Okay, it's a beautifully interwoven and the thematic coherence that it has, the thematic unity that uh, he, he keeps it, okay, he's keeping it up and it literally requires that much of praise. Uh, the only trouble is that this poem is a little bit uh, lengthy and it's a bit difficult to comprehend when you just read and try to understand it. Okay, but it's a very beautiful poem and one thing that he does is this, by taking these three achievements which is actually happening in the physical plane, he is actually talking about a different religion. Okay. He says that uh, uh, these achievements, okay, these just happened and this actually happened because of the will of God. There is a divine purpose, okay. So, such a kind of, uh, um, you know, a fervor was there if you look back on to your past. Uh, about the title of the poem Passage to India, I should tell you that the poem Passage to India, it was included in the... Um, in the collection of poem by Walt Whitman, uh, the collection is titled as Leaves of Grass. In the year 1872, Walt Whitman actually continued to publish this uh, Leaves of Grass until his death, adding uh, more poems to it, okay, year after year. So, the title Passage to India used by Walt Whitman, this had inspired E.M. Forrester, uh, to select that particular title as uh, the title of his fiction, which again takes the same name, Passage to India. Uh, moving on to line by line explanation of the first text. Huh? Let us start. Passage to India. As I told you, India actually represents a land of spirituality. Singing my days, singing the great achievements of the present. Singing the strong, light works of engineers, our modern wonders, the antique, ponderous seven outweighed. In the old world, the east, the Suez Canal, the new, by its mighty railroad spanned, the seas inlaid with eloquent gentle wires, yet first to sound at ever sound, the cry with thee, O soul. The past, past, the past, the past, the dark, unfathomed retrospect, teeming gulf, the sleepers and the shadows, the past, the infinite greatness of the past. For what is the present, after all, but the growth out of the past? 
as a projectile formed impelled passing a certain line still keeps on so the present utterly formed impelled by the past so this is how the first stanza ends let us move on to the meaning singing my days over here see one thing that you have to note when studying this poem is this in the beginning the writer actually takes the position of a singer okay so when standing in the status of a singer he talks about all these achievements he talks about the relevance of the past he talks about the relevance of uh, uh, asian and african myths uh, bibles and legends okay that uh, uh, the spirituality which is abounding in this ancient literatures and all okay then he goes on talking about uh, many conditions which were there in the past he talks about the traveling uh, the efforts of uh, mariners uh, scientists voyagers architects and all explorers and all it is all because of their efforts and endeavors that we have actually reached in this particular point of time and um, then on reaching a particular level being uh, after being addressed the real problem of human kind he uh, you know using the miltonic vision he talks about the time when adam and eve lived in the paradise and after their fall from paradise the vast progeny of adam and eve they are actually um you know wandering around the earth on the cold earth because earth is not at all responding to their question they have been wandering around uh, okay trying to know what is the meaning of life and he says that as a singer he is also helpless the real meaning of life okay that will be given to you you know uh, that map of incognita that will be uh, completed the gap will be filled by one and only person who is the true son of god and who is that true son of god he is the poet okay so uh, the writer over here takes her all of two persons the singer but singer is actually uh, a person who doesn't have too much of relevance singer happens every time okay a singer talks about different phases of life but when you come to poet 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 is somebody he refers to poet as the true son of god and poet is capable of something okay uh, the poet is capable of um literally uh, filling the gap which is left behind okay something that the uh, that myriad progeny of adam and eve couldn't find if they get that particular answer then they can go back to the uh to the the primal situation okay to the primal intuition so of a human uh, mind uh, we can get back to the same paradisal state are you getting it so a poet will be capable of that so you just keep this idea in mind so in the first stanza he takes the role of a singer okay singing my days over here singing means celebrating my days singing the great achievements of the present singing the strong light works of engineer so i believe i needn't tell you much about this because what are the achievements what are the strong light works of engineers over here of course that the three achievements that we had just shared opening of suez canal trans atlantic cable and the trans continental railway okay all these so uh, i am celebrating okay these achievements which are the products of technology or science our modern wonders he goes to the extent of calling these three achievements as modern wonders are you getting it the antique ponderous seven out weight antique means we know that earlier there were only seven wonders in the world and he says that these three uh, scientific achievements can outdo the seven wonders okay so these three had already outdone the seven wonders antique ponderous seven outweighed and dick means odd okay earlier uh, you know uh, conception of the seven wonders in the world ponderous means serious and boring right now you just can't relate to okay those do not remain as the seven wonders that's it well the old world the east the suez canal 
okay the old world uh, you have to uh, make note of this too old world referred over here represents east and new world is of course west over here america okay so the old world the east the swiss canal so he says he talks about one one after the other the three achievements first case is that of the swiss canal so during the time america was considered as the new world okay the seas inlaid with eloquent gentle wires the seas over here this talks about one of the achievements among the three atlantic cable which was used for telegraph communication so over here seas are the atlantic seas inlaid with the eloquent gentle wires eloquent gentle wires in the sense the wires are actually given as eloquent it's actually a case of transferred epithet happening over here okay what we know that wires will never be eloquent but over here he says that seas inlaid with eloquent eloquent over here the cables are used for telegraph communication that way it is eloquent okay yet first to sound and ever sound the cry with the o soul or the we get a taste of the exhortation to spirituality over here okay and that's why uh, we have the title passage to india all time we can be redu redeemed in god we have to go to the past spirituality okay past first to sound and ever sound the cry with the o soul the past the past the past so whatever okay we have reached up to this particular level but uh, still i could okay marveling at wondering at these three achievements i could listen to the call of the soul inside me okay there is this deep sense of spirituality conveyed through these lines a cry with the o soul the past i could see the relevance of the past how important was past past the dark unfathomed retrospect why is it unfathomed because it is measureless okay unfathomed over here means measureless okay the past is measureless retrospect retrospect means looking back into the past the past is actually behind us right so retrospect is actually a term that we always use um, as synonym to uh the uh, the sense of past regarding it so the dark unfathomed retrospect the teeming gulf okay the teeming means the huge gulf about the greatness or the merits of the past the sleepers and the shadows okay that gulf is actually filled with the sleepers sleepers of the past and the shadows okay the past is said to be in sleep just because we, we don't know okay uh, apart from the records of the history that we could uh, literally have right now uh, all the other thing these are measureless okay so you should in underrate the relevance of our past the past the infinite greatness of the past so he says that the you know you just cannot comprehend the greatness of past if you are standing in the present okay then it is all because of the efforts of the human race okay uh, you know um, in improving our life in achieving their goal okay you shouldn't underrate the relevance of the past we are here just because the past was there as a projectile formed okay projectile of you know for example you take the case of a missile like a projectile formed impelled passing a certain line still keeps on impelled means driven like a projectile okay it's like somebody had launched a missile so there is a dream which is there in the past okay and it is it was continuing in the past and the same dream is actually continuing in the present too okay it is driven it is impelled passing a certain line still keeps on okay that dream which was vested in the persons of that particular time people of that time it is still going on somebody or the other has taken up and those persons are the explorers voyagers scientists architects engineers 
okay they had taken it up knowingly or unknowingly and uh, by uh, reading the poem we have the sense like the scientists the voyagers okay uh, the mariners uh, these engineers and architects they actually are unaware of this particular uh, endeavor that uh, they are up to okay and he feels like it is the function of a poet okay uh, in order to convey this idea so, so you have been actually impelled by the thoughts of the past okay your ancestors also had the very um, the very uh, sense of light inside their uh, their mind to uh, unify the whole world okay part by part and right now when you do all these achievements this again talks about the same well so the present utterly formed impelled by the past okay so we have reached on to this particular era we are witnessing these achievements and we are wondering at it and this was all possible this was made possible just because of the past which was already there men of that time were striving hard okay like the men of uh, the present time is doing okay so uh, what we are right now is all because of the existence of the past and the present is actually impelled driven by the past and so he uh, ends the first stanza like this and i hope uh, the points that we had just discussed are uh, pretty clear with you um, next session uh, will be on the second stanza uh, this um, session will be very long if i <laughs> include the second stanza too okay that's why uh, we are summing up right over here if you have any doubt you can mail me i have given the mail id in the description box below um, so prepare very well thank you for listening and wait for the next session too